Good morning. I call to order this virtual meeting of the Saline County Board of Commissioners for March 31st, 2020. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick. Commissioner Shadwick. Here. Commissioner Sparks. Here. Commissioner Vidrickson. Here. Commissioner Weiss. Here. Commissioner White. Here. I ask that uh, those present and uh, listening uh, please stand and join me in a flag salute followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the American Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we get into the uh, citizens' input, I would like to uh, uh, r review the, the rules, so to speak. If, if there are any citizens who wish to participate in the meetings, you need to dial 785-621-0800. You will then need to or, uh, enter a participant code, which is 782-956, followed by the pound sign. Uh, if you wish to speak either during the public forum or when the we, we per, uh, chairman requests public comment, you must dial star nine on your phone, and that will alert the uh, the monitor the moderator, excuse me, uh, who will then open up your line. So at that point, uh, I would like to ask if there are any citizens who wish to speak on business that is not on today's agenda. Uh, yes, I do have one. Uh, caller ending in 7811. Please go ahead. Okay, caller, and uh, you need to identify yourself, please. Wesley Hilsey. Go ahead, sir. I live at 4633 North Simpson Road. Uh, right now, they are working on our coal and when that is all done, by May, this road is usually busy, and I think we have approximately 40 to 50 cars traveling down it a day, and the right rock they put down is just a complete mess when it rains. Uh, just need to figure out some way of doing a chip and seal down Simpson Road all the way to the Ottawa County line to fix it because it's really uh, flat. There's no correct peak on it. Uh, I think all the neighbors are agreeing with me. There needs to be some kind of chip and seal or ground up asphalt that needs to be put on it because when, it, when this is open, it is the main road for all the roads around us and it's highly busy. All right, we will, we will pass those thoughts along to our Road and Bridge Department and, uh, and give them your thoughts. And thank you for your okay, call. thank you. Is there anyone else, Phil? Mr. Chairman, I have no one else who's raised their hand. Uh, no one else has uh, pushed the button at this point, so we will move on to the uh, regular business. And uh, today's consent agenda, uh, which includes uh, prior minutes, tax roll adjustments, accounts payable and payroll, and approval of the public forum. Uh, are there any commissioners who wish to have something removed from today's consent agenda? Hearing no objection, we will uh, accept the consent agenda as uh, presented. We'll move on to action items, which is item number one, uh, RFA 14620 2020 Power Broom Bid Award with Darren, Fish, Darren Fischel, our Road and Bridge Administrator. Good morning, Darren. Good, good morning, Commissioners. Um, this is a request for action for the purchase of one new power broom that was let out bid according to County, County Policy 40 32. Bids were sent to five bidders. We received one bid from Barry Tractor 
for a superior power broom in the amount of $63,710. After evaluating the bids and the needs of the departments, we subtracted some options and with the vendor's approval, have an adjusted purchase price of $55,675 with a two-year warning. The uh, alternatives for action would be to accept the bid from Barry Tractor, to reject the, and rebid, um, three, instruct staff to pursue other options. Staff recommends accepting the bid from Barry Tractor. We have looked into source well contracting for the purchase and have not received any lower pricing. This is an important piece of equipment for our department. It is primarily used to clean the roads prior to the striping operation. With the aggressive tack the engineering department has been taking with the chip seal, we are also using it for maintenance on those roads. This will replace a 1998 Roscoe Power Broom with 8,019 hours. It will be offered to the Expo Center. If the Expo Center declines it, it will be sold on Purple Wave with the Board of County Commissioner's approval. This type of equipment is generally not available for rental at the times when we need it due to the time of the seasonal construction season. The money will be used from our 011 account, the capital outlay line item in our 2020 road and bridge budget, which currently has an unencumbered balance of $82,823. Uh, subtracting this purchase price of $55,675 will leave a balance of $27,148. Okay, before I open it up for other commissioner comments, uh, and in no way is this reflecting on our road and bridge department or any other department uh, within our organization. However, at this time in, in the, the COVID experience that we're going through, uh, I think that we carefully need to consider any uh, non-essential or emergency type purchase, uh, all of them, uh, and because we don't know where this thing is gonna take us. So we, we need to, really dive into these extra expensive uh, uh, things that come before us and decide whether we can delay it or if, if it really is needed right then and now and uh, we need to carefully consider all of our purchases from this point on forward and I say that uh, with Darren and and other presenters that are on the line today with the expensive items, they did not know this was coming forth. They have done their due diligence. These these uh, bid requests started more than 30 days ago, or even 60 days ago, and so and I have not communicated with them that this was going to be my thought for the day. So uh, that having been said, I will uh, let other commissioners fire away. Does anyone else have anything to, to speak, say? This is Commissioner Shadwick. <clears throat> is that something we can delay? I wouldn't advise it. Our other broom that we have is 15 years old. Um, this is something that uh, uh, that we, we really do use an excessive lot of. Uh, when we need it, we need it. Um, and like I said, the uh, construction season being at that time, all of the rental brooms are out. This is Commissioner Vidrickson. Uh, Darren, will we, I mean, if, if we were to delay it 30 days, uh, would, would that be a, a hindrance to your department? Or, I mean, would we be able to if live you, with that? You, you know, if you would delay it 30 days, um, I believe um, we could work with that. Um, it would be a matter of contacting the vendor and seeing if they would agree to hold their bid price. Well, I think that would, Commissioner Vidrickson again, I think that would be the prudent thing to do is, is to table this one for at least 30, for the 30 days and bring it back before us. That'll give you time to check with the, uh, with the bidder. And uh, yeah, hopefully in 30 days, we will know where this COVID-19 is taking us and where it's going to leave us as a county. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's unknown what we're going to have to do at the health department or, or any other department for that matter. So uh, do any other commissioners have comments? This is Commissioner Weiss. Yes. Uh, one question, Darren. What is the uh, what is the length of the when is the bid uh, expire? You know, typically the bids are good for 30 days. Um, this particular bid was opened on 226 of 2020. Um, 
I haven't looked through that, but typically they, they're held for 30 days. So what day did you open the bids? I'm sorry. On 226. February 26. And this is Commissioner Weiss again. So this, this bid is already expired. Is that what you're saying? You know, I believe they would hold it. They would not hold us to that at this time if it were approved today. Uh, I have been in contact with them, and, and, and I had told them that today was going to be the day that I, I was able to get it uh, to the Board of County Commissioners, and he was okay with that. This is Commissioner Weiss, uh, one more time. <clears throat> we had an issue with our chip sale last year. <clears throat> Correct. any of that, uh, the problems we were having, it was one of the most uh, complained items uh, that I had to answer to during the course of the year. Was any of those problems related to uh, uh, correct brooming or sweeping of the roads? It was not. Uh, but we, because of those issues, we did have to use it more. We, um, Justin and I have evaluated that, uh, that particular problem, Mr. Weiss, and, and we do believe we have a, a solution for it. And uh, he is on um, after I am on the chip seal. And the, no, he's on, on the bituminous crack sealing. I think he could probably better answer that question. But we did use this broom considerably more yes, last year, yes. Are there any, Commissioner Vidrickson, are there any chip and seal projects that are on the table to be completed within the next 30 days? No. That, that makes it e an easy decision for me, uh, anyway. Personally, my, my, I'm only one vote, but uh, I think we should look at uh, delaying the letting of this bid for 30 days. Uh, Darren, you can check with the bidder to make sure that that's okay. Uh, and, and if it's not, I mean, you'd obviously you'd need to get back with this as quickly as possible. But uh, I, again, I, I don't know where this COVID-19 has taken us, what it's going to do to our county budget. I think we need to be prudent with our spending. And if we can delay this for 30 days, I think that's the prudent thing to be doing. So any other commissioners? Mr. Chair, this is Commissioner White. Um, it is an essential piece of equipment, um, and I would anticipate that the vendor would be more than happy to work with us and extend it for another 30 days so i i would concur to table the issue and review it in 30 day time period uh commissioner vidrickson again I, and i i'm with commissioner white on that one uh i do see it as an essential piece of equipment i just uh, our, our timing uh it's not our fault it's not darren's fault uh it's just the prudent thing to do right now is to hold off, I think, for 30 days on this one particular purchase and uh, and revisit in 30 days. And again, Darren, if you uh, can get a hold of your, uh, what is it, uh, Barry, Barry Tractor and uh, confirm with them that we could do that because it, I, I think the, it will pass, but we, we just need time to sort out our, our issues. Sure, I will contact the vendor. Um, I will call them and also through an email and um, include the administrator and the commissioners in on that. That way, if, if he does give me an answer, that people can get that uh, in a timely manner. Okay, I, I don't. I can't see other <laughs> entities right now spending the money either without knowing where this is going. So, uh, any rate, uh, that having been said, um, <clears throat> is there any public comment? This is Commissioner Weiss uh, one more time. I'm sorry I had another question before you went to the public. Uh, could, could it be possible that, uh, that we table this till we hear back from the vendor and not put a date of 30 days on it? I will yield to the administrator on that one, uh, whether that's necessary or unnecessary or Um, this is County Administrator Philip Smith Haynes. I, I would say uh, if the commission wants to um, defer this decision, it's probably a good idea not to put a specific date on it. Um, you don't have a meeting that happens to fall 30 days from now anyway, so um, 
having an, a more open-ended date and might be a good thing. In other words, uh, defer, Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, defer uh, decision until till a later date. Is that okay? Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner. This is this is Commissioner White. Um, we're having audio issues with our administrator. I couldn't hardly hear anything he said. He didn't say or anything. Answer your question. <laughs> Second that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, you need to restate the motion, or did you make one? No. no. Okay. I'm sorry, I did not hear the administrator's comment in regards to the question. Okay, I, I get that. Uh, but Jim said he'll second that, and I didn't know what he meant All by. Right. Uh, this, uh, is this is the administrator. The administrator. I'm, I'm on, on, on the phone, the phone now. now. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So the, the, the question is, uh, Philip, whether uh, if, as far as the motion goes, if we were just to defer this till a later date, is that the appropriate way rather than, say, 30 days? Yeah, I yeah, think that, I think would, that, be that would be preferable because, because, uh, because uh, as I said, although you couldn't hear me, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have a meeting that falls exactly 30 days from today. So an open-ended uh, date would be good. Any other comments? And we didn't receive any uh, uh, phone calls from anyone for public comment. So at this time, I would uh, take a suggestion or motion from Commissioner. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Shadwick. I move that we delay this decision to a later date and table. Is there a second? Motion. And, and who yes. is that? Roger Sparks. Okay, seconded by Roger. I second the motion. All right. Is there any further discussion? All right. I will uh, repeat the motion, and it is uh, it has been moved and seconded that we delay the decision, defer to a later date for RFA 146-20-2020 Power Broom Bid Award, and I will do a roll call vote. Commissioner White. Yay. Commissioner Weiss. Yay. Commissioner Sparks. Yay. Commissioner Shadwick. Yay. And Commissioner Vidrickson, aye. The motion does pass 5 to 0. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. We'll move on to item number 2, which is RFA 150 20 2020 Bituminous Crack Seal Bidding Award uh, with Justin Mater, our county engineer. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this request for action is to discuss and take uh, appropriate action on a Slane County Road and Bridge Department request to award the bid for bituminous crack sealing. Sealed bids were opened on March 19, 2020 at 10 a.m. Two bids were received, and you should have um, a, uh, a copy of the bid tabs, hopefully in front of you. Um, all roads to receive crack seal shall be completed by December 18th, 2020, uh, and there, as well as um, with other operations on um, asphalt roads, there will be no work allowed during weed harvest. Uh, you should also have in front of you a copy of the um, county map with red lines uh, that show the roads that will receive a crack seal. I've got two alternatives uh, for this action. Number one is to accept the bids as indicated in the staff recommendation, and number two is reject the bids. Uh, staff recommends to accept the bid from Pavement Pros LLC for the amount of estimated work equal to $85,801.14. Funds for this project will be taken from our contractual asphalt work. This account has a current balance of $1,926,970. Other asphalt contractual work to be taken from this account uh, includes the chip seal, which I'll be opening up bids uh, for that on April 2nd, and the hot mix asphalt um, contract. And we've already um, opened those bids last week, and I'll be um, asking for those that bid approval uh, on the 7th. Uh, so these bids will be open for the next, yeah, these bids will be open for the next few weeks, and so that will um, help me 
prioritize the, the amount of work we can do within the asphalt um, contractual work fund. Is there any questions? Well, Commissioner Vidrickson, for me, this is a tough one. This is a tough decision to make. Uh, I mean, we, the process has to start probably at this point. Uh, I'm, I'll open it up to comments or questions from other commissioners and, and go from there. Can I make one comment, uh, yes. Commissioner? Is that this work is um, paid as the work is completed. Um, and talking with um, pavement pros out of, out of McPherson, they plan on doing this work in the later half of the year. So the, the expenses for this work will be, you know, in you know, September, October, November time frame. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson again. So that having been said, uh, we would still be obligated to the expenditure, but we would be rolling the dice as to when we would, you know, we'd need the, the money later on. It is in the departmental budget, that's for certain. So uh, it, it would be delayed and more than likely till the, the latter part of the year, as you're suggesting. Uh, again, I will ask for comments from commissioners. Commissioner Weiss here. Justin, I have one question. Uh, the, uh, the reason for this feeling is to uh, protect the roads from damages and, um, and uh, more costly repairs down the road. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. In my opinion, crack seal is one of the most important things you can do for an asphalt road. Um, you know, so all roads are going to crack, whether it's asphalt or concrete. And uh, the worst thing, um, the worst enemy to a hard surface road is water getting down into the base. And so what this operation does is it seals up all of those cracks and, and really that, that direct path of the water from the surface down to the base. Um, you know, so this is if we do if we do anything to a to an asphalt road is is you don't you want to do crack seal. This is Commissioner Weiss one more time. With that being said, uh, then we could be uh, if we spend this money now, it could save the county quite a, a expense down the road by uh, more damage being done to these roads. Is that correct? Absolutely, without a doubt. Commissioner White, question time. Um, are we going to, if, if we don't approve this right now, are we looking at there being a shortage of, of these projects available by the contractor, uh, kind of similar to a flood issue, another emergency we've been through here recently, and there were a shortage of uh, people to actually do the work? Is that a possibility, Justin? What, what my concern is, and this really goes for all of the um, asphalt maintenance types of projects, so that's crack seal, chip seal, and overlay, um, is the, the Kansas Department of Transportation is moving forward with all construction projects. Um, however, a lot of cities who depend on sales tax to you know, pay for a lot of these types of projects are either canceling or, or most of them are delaying their projects. And so the, my concern is what's going to happen is that in the later part of the year, everyone's going to move forward with these projects and they're going to want to get them done immediately. Um, I think if, if, if we can get them under contract now, um, we're a known quantity for the contractor that, hey, they do have this type of work. If we delay it and wait um, till later in the year to bid it, I think everyone else is going to want to be moving forward with their projects and we might not get any bidders because I, their, their schedule is already full. Um, you know, I, I want to be a, a placeholder you know, in their schedule. Definitely. Justin, I appreciate your comments and, and I couldn't agree more with you. It is, uh, it's kind of like pay now or pay later and um, it's, it's an important maintenance component. Um, okay, I, I have no more questions, Commissioner, okay. Chair. Com Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, I did hear, Justin, I, I think I heard that uh, if we were to award this contract and along comes October and they still haven't started, 
and we are out of money, can we cancel the contract? Yes. Yeah, because I, I, I have to issue a notice to proceed. I see. Uh, to, to, have them, to have them start. Um, so, yeah, because really all what we're doing is we're just um, establishing unit prices, you know, for, uh, you know, tons of, of crack fill material, um, traffic control, you know, the, on the, the bid tabs, I've got three bid items. So we're just establishing those unit prices. Um, the amount of work that we let them to do is not guaranteed by the contractor, and it states in there that we can ad ad adjust the quantities um, more or less at any time, and they have to hold those prices. Okay, uh, Commissioner Vidrickson again. Uh, with that type of language and that type of approach, uh, I'm certainly in favor of, of issuing this contract. So uh, any other comments uh, from commissioners? Yeah, Commissioner Sparks here. Hello, hello Justin? Yes. Hey, uh, uh, just a quick question is that are any of these roads that we're looking at uh, uh, doing the crack and seal on, did we uh, – chip and seal any of these roads last year no and so what last year um we had it was a little more complicated on the, the scheduling because we had roads that we needed to crack seal before we chip sealed and so we had to, to really push the crack seal contractor to get work done before the chip seal contractor was in this year all of the roads that we are crack sealing um, will not be chip sealed or were chip sealed last year either because we always you always okay. want to try to get the your roads crack sealed before you chip seal yeah that's what and, it is and yeah one other quick one other question justin i'm sorry is that uh you said earlier about the trying to get it uh the the water getting into the face and if this is going to be done later in the year you said uh, so all the rains this spring or whatever, uh, we could damage the base at that point? Yes, that's correct. Um, but also keep in mind, we can, if we go in now and, let's say, today and crack through all the roads, those roads in November are going to have more cracks in them. Um, you know, and so, yeah, you're correct. There's there's roads out there that are going to have that open crack and not sealed up, but you're always going to have that situation. Um, okay. You just try to minimize it as, as much as possible. You know, another thing that I, I prefer to do crack seal when it's cooler out because what that does is those cracks, as the asphalt is, is cooler, the asphalt contracts and your, yeah. your cracks open up a little bit more and will accept yes. more material. Now, granted, that does cost more because we pay crack filler by the pound. The more pounds you put in a crack, the, the more expensive it is. But I think you get a better job. You get a better seal of that crack um, if that material can penetrate a little bit deeper into your asphalt surface. Okay. Thank you. Great, great. Are there any further questions? That, this is Commissioner Vidrickson. Any other further questions or comments from commissioners? How about public comment? Philip, do we have anybody on the line wishing to comment on this item? No one has raised their hand. Seeing none, uh, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, this is Commissioner Shadwick, and I recommend uh, we accept a bid from Pavement Pros LLC for the amount of estimated work to equal $85,801.14. Commissioner Sparks here. I second the motion. Commissioner Vidrickson, it has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 150-20, 2020 bituminous crack sealing bid award to Pavement Pros LLC. Further comments? I will call the roll. Commissioner White. Yay. Commissioner Weiss. Yay. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is also aye. That motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you very much, Justin. Or Jason, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll move to item number 3, which is RFA 141-20 tilt skillet for the jail bid award 
Captain Stan Fruits from the Sheriff's Office. Good morning, Captain Fruits. Good morning. You have the floor, the microphone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, the Sheriff's Office is requesting to purchase a uh, correctional quality tilt skillet um, to replace the existing tilt skillet in the jail. The current skillet is approximately over 20 years old and has reached the end of its life. Um, we use this uh, appliance pretty heavily in the kitchen for cooking the meals for the inmates. Uh, uh, when uh, we had the vendor, one vendor did a walkthrough of the kitchen to uh, uh, to so he could apply for this bidding. Uh, he was the original installer for this uh, appliance, and he was surprised it was still going. And which, in fact, it's still going, but we're we're having trouble with it, so it's time to replace it. So. Bids were sent out. Uh, we had four businesses respond with bids. Uh, the lowest bid on the tilt skillet uh, was from Douglas Equipment at uh, Bluefield, West Virginia for $16,507.98. And do you want to review your, uh, your budget impact? Uh, this will be used in the 2020 EIP. Uh, we had estimated the cost at 18000 and like I said, the low bid was $16,507.98. Okay. Um, I guess I'll open it up by saying that uh, do, do you have any, have you had past experience with Douglas Equipment out of Bluefield, West Virginia? No, sir, I have not. Uh, it brings me to uh, a question, I guess you'd say. When I, I see a local vendor is about three hundred dollars high, uh, I want to I want to accept a, a local bid. That's just my personal view, but uh, uh, I'll open it up to uh, commission comments and questions. Mr. Chair. Yes. Yes, Commissioner White. Yes. Um, Dan, how, how does freight fit into this this picture? Um, it's got to get from West Virginia to here, I'm sure. I will add in the bid from Douglas. Uh, they had they if they won the bid, they would hire Sunflower Supply to install uh, said equipment, and that is in the bid. Okay, thank you. Uh, to Mr. Vidrickson again, and, and to that uh, note, what about uh, warranty work or anything like that? Well, I mean, would they be required to, you know, Sunfire uh, is right here in town, would probably be able to be out within a matter of hours, and uh, just a question. Uh, you're probably correct on that. Sunflower is the closest, and... And I'm just assuming, and I know you're not supposed to do that, but uh, probably Douglas Equipment would have some plier uh, do their warranty work. Further questions from commissioners? This is Commissioner Shadwick. I'm not so sure that Sunflower does repair work anymore. They've not done, been able to do anything for us for a while. They've not had the staff. Are there other comments or questions from commissioners? Uh, this is Commissioner Wheat. I have a question uh, for the administrator. Uh, can you uh, review what our rules on uh, local bids are as far as that uh, percentage of, uh, of being in the bid and, and matching? Uh, yes, it's 1%, yes, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, Deputy Administrator uh, Hannah Stambaugh is on the line and she has a comment. Uh, go ahead, Hannah. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Yes, uh, what uh, um, County Administrator Philip um, described, that's exactly what is in our purchase policy, and we had discussed that with Captain Stan Bruce, too. So uh, we do have a local preference policy in place within our purchasing policy, but it does state 1%. So while we're close, um, Douglas's bid is lower than the local supplier, Sunflower. Further comments? This is uh, Commissioner Sparks. One of my, I uh, just a thought that I just popped into is I, uh, I know that we've got to have this because if it went down that we'd need it to cook. But are we getting into the same situation here? Is that can we look at this uh, for 30 days to look at this in 30 days to see if they will hold that purchase price for 30 days? Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, I think we could probably do that, Roger, uh, Commissioner Sparks, but uh, as, as the, the captain uh, said, they're already having trouble with it. And I mean, with the restaurant equipment and things like this, I mean, it could be overnight and it's gone. So I, I think... Oh, and, I, I understand that. And the... I, I understand. That's, I just wanted to ask that question. Yes. Further comments from commissioners? Is there any public comment? No one has raised their hand. There is none. I will ask for a motion from the commission. Commissioner Shadwick here, and I do understand our policy of the 1%, um, but I know that um, you know we're all struggling here, and I would like to uh, help um, in the special circumstances, help a local vendor. So my motion will be to accept Sunflower Restaurant's bid of $16,872. Is there a second to the motion? Commissioner Sparks and I second that motion. All right, it has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 141-20 tilt skillet uh, for the jail bid award. Are there further comments? This is Commissioner Weiss. Uh, I'm a little concerned that uh, we put a policy in place to give us guidance and to, uh, to help us uh, as bids come down, um, down the road. I, I believe we're opening up Pandora's box here by stepping outside a policy. Further comments? This is Commissioner Shadwick and uh, Commissioner Weiss. I totally understand where you're coming from, and normally I would side with you on this, and I have uh, in the past been very steadfast on going with the low bid, um, but I do think that we are in extraordinary times, and um, I would like to keep this local. Having that been kind of put into my motion is, um, yeah, I don't think that I'm establishing a um, a precedent for long term, but I think I am establishing probably a precedent for the short term. Yeah. All right, I will call for the question then. Uh, and we will start with a roll call vote with uh, Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Nay. Commissioner Sparks. Yay. Commissioner Shadwick. <laughs> Aye. Commissioner Vidrickson. Aye. The motion does pass four to one to approve RFA 141-20 tilt skillet for the Bay, uh, jail award. So thanks for everyone for their comments and thank you, Captain. We'll move thank to you. we'll move to item number four. Um, RFA 142-20 steam kettle for the jail bid award again with Captain Fruits. Yes, sir. Uh, the jail is requesting the purchase of a correctional quality steam kettle to replace the existing one. Again, this this uh, appliance is uh, approximately over 20 years old. It's um, lived its life. Uh, this one we're really having problems with, and because uh, uh, we had scheduled this one for next year, but due to all the problems that we're having with it. Uh, I asked the county administrator for permission to move it to this year. Uh, we sent four bids out, or sent bids out. Four businesses responded. Uh, the low bid that we got on it was from Sunflower Restaurant Supply. 
this will be used on the 2020 EIP. Uh, and uh, and we are requesting that uh, the award be given to Sunflower Restaurant Supply. Uh, this one, this Commissioner Vidrickson seems to be a little bit more clear from that purchasing standpoint because uh, Sunflower is substantially, or I guess not substantially, but a, a couple of hundred dollars cheaper than the other bids. So uh, further comments or questions from commissioners? Are there any public comment? No one has raised their hand. Hearing none, uh, I would ask for a motion on the RFA 142-20. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Shadwick, and I move that we accept the bid from Sunfire Restaurant Supply in the amount of $15,375. Commissioner Sparks, and I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 142-20 steam kettle for the jail award uh, to Sunfire Restaurant Supply. Any further comments? I will go for a roll call vote with uh, Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. Motion passes 5-0. We'll move to uh, item number five, which is RFA 147-202, 2020 Police SUVs Bid Award with uh, Captain Hughes from the Sheriff's Office. Uh, good morning, Captain. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, the first one I have before you today is a uh, request for action to purchase two police uh, SUVs. The Sheriff's Office is requesting the purchase of these two marked uh, patrol units. These vehicles will replace a 2016 Ford Explorer SUV that uh, has an excess of 176,000 miles on it now and a uh, 2016 Ford Explorer SUV that have an excess of 155,000 miles um, right now. The um, bids were put out and they were opened on 3-3 of 2020 and uh, we uh, reviewed the bids and attached to uh, the RFA I provided you with a spreadsheet of uh, the bid proposals from Marshall Motors along MacArthur both of Salina and uh, the attachment shows the values of with trade and without trade and the trade value of the, of the two vehicles combined. And as you can see, um, Marshall Motors with trade came in a low bid, $105,878. Um, the bids do meet uh, specifications and uh, staff recommendation is to purchase these uh, two police SUVs from Marshall Motors uh, with trade-in value of $105,878. These vehicles are, uh, were approved in uh, 2020 EIP funds, and with uh, Captain Fruits' purchases today and uh, prior purchases out of the funds, we currently have a balance of $297,902, and the remaining balance uh, after this purchase, if approved, would be $192,000. $24. Okay, Captain, this is uh, Commissioner Vidrickson. Normally I would ask why, uh, when we have three different items before us today for four different uh, uh, vehicles, that we didn't roll those into one bid. I would, and I'm, uh, in light of what's going on in the world right now, I'm glad we don't have it that way uh, because we can look at them as, as uh, these two items that you're coming before us here are for patrol. Is that correct? Yes, sir. They'll be marked units and they'll be responding for calls for service um, on the streets. That having been said, I, I can see, um, and particularly with the, taking into account the mileage of uh, 175,000 and uh, 154,000 on vehicles that are four years old, uh, I can see no way to stand in the way of this. So uh, I will open it up for other commissioners to make comments or suggestions. This is Commissioner Weiss. Uh, one question, the Law MacArthur uh, bids, there's three different options. Uh, did all of the, uh, including Marshall Motors, did all of the uh, bids that you received 
uh, meet your specs? Uh, yes, sir, they did. And, uh, Mr. Commissioner, the way they were bid, they were bid on, on horsepower. And Long MacArthur had um, three options. They had three different um, horsepowers per option. And all three of Long MacArthur uh, did meet the, uh, the horsepower bids. And, uh, but as you can see, the, regardless of what option Long MacArthur provided, uh, Marshall Motor did uh, uh, beat their, their lowest price and, and still maintain specifications. Further Thank comments? You. Are there any public comments? No one has raised their hand at this time. We have no public comment ready, so at this point I would uh, take a motion uh, regarding item number five. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Shadwick, and I move we approve RFA 147-20 um, and accept the bid from Marshall Motors for $105,878. Commissioner Sparks, and I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 147-20 for 2 2020 Police SUVs Bid Award uh, from Marshall Motors here in Salina, Kansas. Any further comments? All of those in favor, I will call for the roll. Commissioner uh, White? Aye. Commissioner Weiss? Aye. Commissioner Sparks? Aye. Commissioner Shadwick? Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is also aye. Uh, that motion does pass five to zero. We will move to item number six, RFA 148-20 for one police SUV bid award uh, with Captain Hughes from the Sheriff's Department. Good morning again, Captain. Hi, Commissioners. Uh, this is uh, RFA uh, request number two for me today, obviously for, for vehicles. And this one is to purchase another a 2020 police SUV and this one is requesting to purchase a uh, 2007 Ford Crown Victoria that has um, an excess of 98,000 miles of it are on it uh, to, as of today. The reason this has been kind of bid separately is, is this particular vehicle is, is uh, equipped uh, different than the ones that are on the street. So it, it kind of kept the bid process a lot cleaner as far as when vendors were looking to, to uh, bid on the vehicle. Um, this one is going to replace our, our civil process car, and um, bids were set out again. They were opened on, on, um, on the same date, and you can see the attachments there from Law MacArthur and uh, Marshall Motors that um, with trade-in value from Marshall Motors, uh, $51,939 was the lowest bid. Again, this same vehicle met the same specifications. Uh, the budget impact on this with the uh, prior approved uh, purchases would leave us a balance of $140,085 in the 2020 EIP fund. And it'd be our recommendation to purchase the vehicle from Marshall Motors uh, with the trade-in for $51,939. Okay, Commissioner Vidrickson, um, uh, um, nearly $52,000, and for the, uh, the civil uh, process vehicle, I mean, that isn't a, a pursuit vehicle or anything like that, a patrol vehicle. Uh, it seems to me like we... I mean, I don't know, uh, $52,000 is a lot of money for that car or that vehicle. I, what, by the way, what, what type of vehicle are we purchasing? Uh, Commissioner, that, that's going to be um, the same type of Explorer, or excuse me, the SUV. Uh, it'd be police rated, pursuit rated, but it will um, not be marked. It is used for civil process. However, there are multiple occasions when we do have a civil process deputy that comes out and assists us on calls for service. Um, when we do have um, uh, emergency calls, large incidents, uh, it is not unheard of for this deputy to come out and give us additional manpower and support. And when uh, if he or he or she does that in the future, it's, it's very important that these vehicles are, are equipped uh, 
with a lot of the same requ- equipment we have because we're asking them to, to provide the same job that we're doing. Um, again, the civil process deputy is a, is a law enforcement officer. He's assigned out of the operations division to work temporarily in assignment, but we still require him to respond and take uh, law enforcement activities to uh, dangerous and, and large incidents on the street. Commissioner Vidrickson again. Um, so the difference between this and the two that we just purchased is, is just one is uh, marked and the other one is unmarked. Is that correct? or? Uh, this one's unmarked, Commissioner. Uh, that is some of the expense. This one will not have as an expensive um, light bar system on it. This one does not have a, tr- a prisoner transport uh, cage in the back of it. So we did look at it carefully and, and tried to trim it some expenses to get exactly what is needed in this car for the, the job it does and it can potentially do. But uh, when we did bid this car out, we did make sure we weren't asking for things that we absolutely did not need. So some of the expense on that is, is, is trimmed back on some optional equipment in the vehicle. So this is Commissioner Vidrickson once again. Uh, so I'm a little bit confused there. I didn't realize that the manufacturer would would do things like the light bar and the and the uh, cage and so forth. Is that, am I hearing that correctly? Uh, no, sir. Those are all bid through um, our our vendor KCOM, our local vendor. So when we did the bids, we did not through KCOM. It had a, it had a special package, a special equipment package. And that equipment package for this vehicle is different than the equipment package uh, for the two March cars. And that was all done through uh, KCOM, our local provider, not through the manufacturer. So is that a separate bid? No, sir. What happened uh, is when we bid the vehicle uh, with the equipment, KCOM puts together the equipment package for this particular vehicle. And then when the, the vehicle vendor contacts KCOM, KCOM provides them the equipment package for this specific vehicle. So when Lon MacArthur, for example, and Marshall Motors are, are calculating this bid, they're calculating their vehicle price, and then KCOM says, and here's the stuff the sheriff's office wants. Okay, I've, I'm starting to follow it a little bit. Uh, I noticed this, this is Commissioner Vidrickson once again, but I noticed this morning that a uh, sheriff's vehicle I thought it was a Crown Victoria, was going to the repair shop uh, being towed in. Is, is this the vehicle or is that a different one? No, you, sir. The vehicle you're referring to is the one I'm going to talk to you next about. Okay. I'm a little bit before the horse, but uh, I thought, boy, here we go. We're, we're talking about vehicles today, and there it goes being towed to the shop. So, Okay. So other commissioners for comments or questions regarding this RFA? Is there any public comment? We have one question. Uh, the two patrol vehicles that, uh, that we just had an RFA on had mileages of 150,000 plus. Uh, this Crown Victoria is showing 98,000. Does this Crown Victoria has is it at the end of its life, or does it have uh, another 20, 30, 40,000 miles left to it? Uh, no, sir. This this particular Crown Vic is is like the next one you're going to hear about. It's, it's starting a nickel and dime um, uh, on, on expenses. And then if you look at the trade-in value on this particular vehicle, it's almost doubled of what we traditionally get um, for these Crown Victorias. So the, you know, the trade-in, that, okay, that's another 700 bucks. But uh, as far as the nickel and diming goes to it, it's starting to rust on, on several places too. So if, if we held on to this car, you know, much longer, in addition to mechanical expenses, I think we'd have to start doing some um, body work to prevent or, or, or fix some, some rust cancer that's starting to appear. Any other comments from commissioners? <clears throat> this is Commissioner Shadwick, and in light of uh, the recent budget things, I'm, um, I know that this is different than my motion on the last one that uh, was a vehicle on the on the road, actually, and, and um, I, I am not supportive of this and, and will vote against it. Any other comments? Are there? This is Commissioner, this is Commissioner White. Yes. Um, the 
county has budgeted all these expenditures in our in our twenty budget, and it's on it's on our normal rotation in order to keep our equipment up up to par. It's kind of like crack ceiling on a road. You pay now or you pay later. And I think uh, we'd be foolish not to go ahead and approve this expenditure. This is Commissioner Shadwick, and, and my comment during the budget process every year is that's what makes me nervous when we put it into a budget is everybody assumes that then they get to spend that. And just like any business or any personal um, household, when times get tough, they have to put some things behind. And your budget maybe changes. And so we go through this every year, and, and, and staff comes back and says it's in the budget. Well, that doesn't mean you have to spend the money. Further comments? Is there any public comment? No one has raised their hand at this time. No public comment. Uh, I would, uh, at this point, take a motion. If there is no motion, uh, it will die. All right, we have no motion on the floor for item number six. Uh, that motion will that uh, RFA will die. Is that correct, Philip? Is that the proper procedure? Uh, uh, yes. If there's no motion to approve, then no. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll make one further comment before I move on to item number seven. Uh, I agree with Commissioner White, and I agree with Commissioner Shadwick. And if we were in a different time of... of uh, of our society, I would be voting for this without, without any comments. But right now, we need to hold on and see. Uh, that doesn't mean, uh, Captain, that you can't come back in four or five months from now and you still have this year's budget working and uh, uh, come before us again uh, once we know where we're headed. So that's where we're going to go with this one. And thank you. We'll move to item number seven. Uh, RFA 149-201 2020 Police SUV Bid Award, again with Captain Hughes. And this one is a request, a, uh, this would be a marked uh, police SUV to be used by a school resource officer. Uh, this is going to replace a 20, uh, or 2007 Crown Victoria that has an excess of 98,000 miles on it uh, as of today. It's the vehicle you saw being towed to uh, City Services, City Garage uh, today. Um, this vehicle is, is a marked unit. It is used by a, a school resource officer. But again, it is um, a vehicle that is counted on to respond for calls for service, work accidents. Um, you know, we've had SROs on, on some of our last shooting incidents. So this, this vehicle will be, uh, is equipped um, as a patrol unit because it does respond for or call for services as well. You know, and currently we have SROs on the street right now working uh, for calls for service. And, um, you know, it's imperative that we have that vehicle equipped with all the emergency and safety equipment that, that can handle the calls that, um, that, that are being received just like any other deputy in any other car. And if we currently didn't have that in our current car, we'd, we'd uh, be in a pickle, for lack of better terms. But uh, as you can see uh, from the attachments that uh, are provided with the RFA, we received bids from Marshall Motors and Law MacArthur. Uh, with the trade-in allowance uh, given, Marshall Motors comes in at the low bid at $54,280, and get at it is with trade-in. Um, these vehicles do meet specs. And it's the sheriff's office recommendation that we do purchase the vehicle with trade-in from Marshall Motors for fifty-four thousand two hundred eighty dollars. The budget income or impact was uh, this pre-approved twenty twenty EIP funds. I had to do some quick math after the last um, RFA um, failed, but it appears for for quick math that um, we should have one hundred and thirty-six thousand seven hundred and forty-four dollars remaining. Um, in the EIP funds if this uh, vehicle is purchased. 
Commissioner Vidrickson, um, reluctantly, I might add that I, I'm kind of leaning towards the same uh, path that we just took on the last one. Uh, it's just uh, take a wait and see attitude for uh, some period of time, whether that be 90 days or 120 days or whatever. Uh, but that's where I'm thinking right now. So other questions or comments from the commissioners? This is Commissioner Weeds. I have a question. Uh, the the two police SUVs that we uh, that we had action on earlier, uh, they came in cheaper than this unit is, and it and with a lot less trade-in value. Can you explain why this unit would be higher than the ones that uh, had all the fancy wheels and whistles? Yes, sir. Uh, there was a lot of repurposed equipment on the two Mark SUVs. The, uh, this vehicle is, is so old that uh, the radios are, are obsolete in it or will be. Um, the um, L3, uh, excuse me, the in-car video system is a huge expense. Uh, could, if you look at the itemized list for KCOM, I don't know if you have that or not in the bid specs, but you know that's almost a $5,000 expense that we didn't have on some of the other uh, vehicles. Along with the radio, that's another $5,000 expense. And, and again, this, this vehicle is counted on to, to supplement and, and road patrol activities. And that's equipment that is, that is needed to document incidents, needed for court. Um, of course, the, the lights for safety and, and everything like that. So this vehicle, and the reason it was a bid differently than the other ones is because it had specific equipment it needed. But because of the, the age of the vehicle, a lot of the equipment in it is, is outdated and, and no longer uh, in use. And we really need that equipment to get up to industry standards to, uh, to provide the, the service that this vehicle needs to provide. Commissioner Vidrickson again, uh, declining requests from public safety is, is an extremely difficult decision for me to make. Uh, again, with this being a school resource officer, even though, as you have stated uh, correctly, that it is used for patrol or pursuit or whatever, uh, in, in light of the other things that we're, we're talking about today, I think this is one that we just kind of need to hold off on and bite our lip a little bit and, uh, and, and uh, wait a, <clears throat> a, a period of time. Uh, I mean, even if it's uh, next month, uh, Captain Hughes, uh, that you, need, you see a worsening situation uh, uh, right now. L let me ask you a different question. School is not going to be in service for another 120, you know what, four or five months now. Will that, will that car be on actual patrol during this period? Yes, it is. And commissioners, right now, you know, we're, we have a, a crashed vehicle that is, is out of service. Uh, so we're a vehicle short on that. We have another vehicle that's been in the body shop for approximately three weeks that's been out of service. Uh, we have school resources, school resource officers on shift right now, covering the beat, taking calls for service, and you know we're running vehicles 24 hours a day, seven days a week now because we are short of cars. And you know as this school resource officer is out of school currently, I mean he has taken calls and, and filling the beat um, on our empty slots that we currently have. And then when school resource officers are out of school. If say schools go in that tradition, uh, when they're out of school for Thanksgiving break, uh, school spring break, Christmas break, uh, and during the summers, the school resource officers do come back and they do fill a beach for us. And, and having their cars fully equipped and, and able to handle that is, is beneficial to us, especially during this time of, when we don't have operation. Mr. Vidrickson, uh, I, I totally understand. It, it changes my thinking somewhat, I can assure you. I, I hope that you and your fellow officers understand where we're coming, coming from here uh, from a budgetary standpoint. Uh, I, I'm, I have not made up my mind at this point. Uh, in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to have to do that. But I would, I would request comments or questions again from commissioners. I, I'd like to hear your opinion. Commissioner White. Commissioner White, and I have an administrator question. 
Go ahead. Bill? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my question is, would it be cleaner if we cabled this issue or let it simply die by lack of um, uh, emotion like we did the last item? Well, I suppose that depends on the commission's ultimate intent. If you do uh, wish to reconsider it at some specific interval, it would be cleaner to table it. If you don't really intend to do something specific with it, then letting it die is fine. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I think he answered my question. This is Commissioner Shadwick, and I would like to revisit it at a later time. I'm not smart enough to know what that later time is going to be. You know, is it a month or two months or six months? Um, by rejecting an RFA, that doesn't mean that there a new RFA can't come back at a later time. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, after the, the two minutes or so that I have pondered on this, and as I said, uh, I'm inclined to go the other direction on this one because, as the captain stated, it is being used for patrol. And that's the part that, that swings me in the other direction. So that's where I stand. Commissioner Sparks or Commissioner Weiss, do you wish to weigh in? This is Commissioner Weiss. Uh, I concur with the fact that this is an emergency vehicle being uh, put out on patrol and being uh, replacing a 15-year-old uh, uh, vehicle uh, that, that is currently in the shop. Uh, I think it, it, because of it being an emergency vehicle, it, it needs our attention and we need to uh, make that a priority. So I'm in favor of the uh, RFA. Mr. Sparks, have you got a comment? I. Yeah, I just look at it as a situation where, uh, yeah, we will be getting one of these vehicles back out of the shop probably in the next week or two, and we're, we'll, we'll have those vehicles back in service. But I do look at it that uh, since the, they are out of school and this, this officer is going to be able to be out on the road and be used, I, I, I think this vehicle should be probably purchased at this time. That's just my thought. This is, this is Commissioner Weiss. I have one more question. Uh, when, when we when we uh, purchase a vehicle, how long does it take for us to get that vehicle on the road? That's an interesting question, uh, Mr. Commissioner. A lot of it depends on whether or not the vehicle is, uh, is sitting on a lot somewhere or if it has to be uh, built. With right now, with the... With, uh, shut down i don't have the specific specific answer for that however if we can assume for this conversation that the vehicle is sitting on the lot somewhere by the time um, the vendor gets the vehicle and we can get it to our uh, kcom our local provider um, they got to tear a vehicle down install this equipment it very easily could take six to six weeks to two months to um, get the vehicle on the road, and that's if if everything's lined up perfectly. Mr. Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, you know, that brings to light a, a, another point. Uh, perhaps sometimes in the future we need to ask uh, in, in our RFA process uh, the expected delivery time on these units. Uh, I mean, we're, we're facing the same dilemma when it comes to other departments here. We buy something, uh, and then it's six or eight months later before we can get it, and uh, we were expecting to get it in 30 days. So somewhere along the line, we need to probably put that into our, our request for information anyway when we, when we do this purchasing, uh, what the expected delivery time is, because quite frankly, if we're needing that vehicle right away, uh, your, your delivery time right now tells me that we probably need to go ahead with this if we're going to be six months down the road or seven months down the road. That, uh, I know that KCOM has always put a pretty good delay in things, so uh, that, that's another reason for me to, to vote in, in the affirmative here. So, 
<coughs> Further comments from commissioners? Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Shadwick, and I will make a motion in a sec in a second. But um, as a as a point on a bid, I'm not a car expert, but I got to think that we'd get more than fifteen hundred dollars on Purple Wave for a used police car. So um, would like to look at that sort of thing in in the future. But that uh, being said, um, I move that we approve RFA one forty nine dash twenty and accept the bid from Marshall Motors for $54,280. That includes the trade-in. Commissioner Sparks, and I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 149-201 uh, 2020 Police SUV Bid Award. Um, and I'm going to open this up again for com for comments. Uh, I, I agree with you, Monty, uh, Commissioner Shadwick. I think maybe we should uh, uh, buy this uh, uh, without the trade value and and take our chances on a fifteen hundred dollar item on purple wave I think the last time we did that we come out to the to the plus side pretty good and really we're rolling the dice here on a few hundred dollars uh, one way or the other but I mean I guess you can take that with a grain of salt too we can lose a few hundred or gain a few hundred so it can be clean one way and not as clean the other so I don't I don't know if you if that affects your your motion or your thinking, Monty. Well, um, I'm sure the Marshall Motors figured out their price, including that trade-in. So, is it again? I'm not a used car expert, but do they just take off, or do we just add fifteen hundred dollars onto that price? Is that their bid on the spec Captain, sheet? Is that how on, you understand it, Commissioner Vidrickson, On the spec sheet, it does say without trade fifty-five thousand seven hundred and eighty, which is which is the fifty-four two eighty plus fifteen hundred dollars. That's as simple as that. There's okay. two different numbers there, without trade and with trade. But again, uh, I mean, I apologize a little bit. We're splitting hairs here over a couple of hundred bucks, probably, because we might be able to get two thousand bucks out of it on Purple Wave, and and we might be able to get only twelve hundred. I don't know. So, this is Commissioner Shadwick, and and um, Mr. Chair, I, I agree with you. Um, I think on this one, I my motion will stand, but I would like that to be. Uh, uh, looked at at future bids. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson again, and I uh, certainly appreciate the fact that uh, the police department or the sheriff's department and uh, other entities for that matter are doing this this way now with or without a trade. Does it, does, it does give us that option at that time. So at any rate, I'll go back to the, uh, the, the motion and the second that, that we approve RFA 149-20 for uh, one 2020 police SUV SUV bid award uh, to Marshall Motors in the amount of $54,280. All of those in favor of the motion as on a roll call bid. Commissioner White? Nay. Commissioner uh, Weiss? Aye. Commissioner uh, Sparks? Aye. Commissioner Shadwick? Aye. Commissioner Vidrickson? is I. The motion passes four to one. We, uh, thank you, Captain. Thank you, Commission. Okay, uh, item number eight, uh, proclamation declaring April as National County Government Month with uh, the Deputy County Administrator, Hannah Stambaugh. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I just want to say, given the current situation um, of COVID-19 across the United States, I'm really excited to be able to read this proclamation. Um, after all that Stoning County and all of our other counties have gotten through in the past couple of weeks over across Kansas, it's a, really a true testament as to how and why counties do matter. Just looking at how all of our county departments have come together, how we communicate, and how we work with our other community partners, and how is it that we're actually talking to the public. Truly, it, it is why counties do matter. So with that said, I will read the proclamation. This is for National County Government Month of April 2020. Whereas the nation's 3,069 counties serving more than 300 million Americans provide essential services to create healthy, safe, and vibrant, vibrant communities. And whereas counties provide health services, administer justice, keep communities safe, foster economic opportunities, and much more. 
And whereas Saline County and all counties take pride in our responsibility to protect and enhance the health, well-being, and safety of our residents in an efficient and cost-effective ways. And whereas under National Association of Counties President Marianne Morrison's leadership, NACO is demonstrating how counties matter, especially in supporting older adults, their families, and caregivers. And whereas each year since 1991, the National Association of Counties has encouraged counties across the country to elevate awareness of county responsibilities, programs, and service. And now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Saline County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 2020 as National County Government Month and encourage all county officials, employees, schools, and residents to participate in county government celebration activities. All right, thank you, Hannah. Uh, I would normally ask if there are any activities as planned or scheduled for this, but uh, in light of what's going on, I would say that is would be an irresponsible question. So I would ask. No, nope, actually, that is a great question. <laughs> oh, excuse we, me. We um, actually do have plans. Um, it is really important to highlight county government, um, and even in light of these times, I think it's really important for our citizens to see the different services that the counties do provide. And especially during these times, you do need some encouragement um, and highlight of our employees. So we do have plans to do that with highlighting the functions and duties that our different departments do provide by doing some kind of public information, release information on our Saline County Instagram site. So we do encourage people to follow our county Instagram and watch out for some of those key things that we're going to be highlighting about county government. Commissioner Vidrickson, that having been said, those are our activities then that are that will not be in person, though. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay. I yeah, can more virtual. <laughs> I'll wipe the rest of the egg off of my face then with my previous comment. Okay. Uh, I would take a motion from one of the commissioners in, please. Commissioner Shadwick and I move we um, declare April as National County Government Month. Commissioner Sparks and I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we proclaim uh, National County Government Month and uh, sign the proclamation. <laughs> Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is also aye. Passes five to zero. Thank you very much, Anna. You're welcome. Stay safe. Item number 10, resolution 20-2292, emergency disaster declaration by Mr. Philip Smith Haynes, County Administrator. Mr. Chair, Chair you skipped item nine. Excuse me. I I just saw Hannah there. I'm sorry, we'll go back to item number nine, RFA 139-20, resolution 20-2290, planning commission member appointments, again with Hannah Stambaugh, deputy administrator, and my apologies for goofing that up. So go ahead, Hannah. All right, thank you. So this is a request for action and complimentary uh, resolution for appointments to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission is a citizen board that handles our general development projects, and we do have three positions in which their term expires today. We do have two current members, um, Mr. Michael Tro and Mr. Dwayne Flaherty, who do wish to continue serving on the Planning Commission. We did solicit expression of interest forms, and uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, we did go through those expression of interest forms, and the County Commission did make a recommendation for an appointment. However, we did contact that individual, and he declined to um, that appointment due to some other commitments. So staff is making a recommendation to appoint Mr. Sean Alvarez to a three-year term. So this would be a reappointment of Mr. Tro and Mr. Flaherty and an appointment of Mr. Alvarez to the Planning Commission to a three-year term that uh, their terms would expire on March 31st of 2023. Thank you, Hannah. Questions or comments from commissioners? Any public comment? All right, I will take a motion, please. Commissioner Shadwick here, and I move that we approve RSA 139-20. Um, 
reappointing and appointing the members to the Planning Commission. Commissioner Sparks and I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 139-20, Resolution 20-2020, Planning Commission member appointments for reappointment of Michael Tro and Dwayne Flaherty and appointment of Sean Alvarez to the Saline County <coughs> Planning Commission for a three-year term ending March 31st, 2023. Uh, Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. Commissioner Vidrickson. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. We can now move to item number 10 with Mr. Philip Smith Haynes, Resolution 20-2292, Emergency Dac Disaster Declaration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's probably obvious why we're bringing this item to the commission at this time. Um, this resolution was prepared by our emergency manager, Michelle Barkley. She's asked me to uh, present it this morning because she is on a series of conference calls. Uh, the ch commission chair did make a verbal declaration of a local emergency last Friday, and this uh, resolution affirms that by action of the commission. It will be good for a period of 60 days if approved. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from commissioners? If not, I would take a motion, please. Commissioner Shadwick here, and I don't have the, the language in front of me, but so moved. Commissioner Sparks, second the motion. And the motion is a resolution 20-22 uh, adoption as presented. All those in favor, uh, Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Weiss? Aye. Commissioner Sparks? Aye. Commissioner Shadwick? Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. Motion passes five to zero. We'll move to item number 11, uh, pandemic pay with Marilyn Lemer, Human Resources Director. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, commissioners. Um, as you know, um, there has been the Slink County order and also the executive order from the governor for safe at home or stay at home orders. Um, our goal is to comply with the safe at home orders and maintain less than 10 person situations and require social distancing. Uh, we are requesting approval for pandemic pay effective March 30th, 2020. Um, County Administrator um, Phil and I have had several versions back and forth, mm -hmm. and the final version has been presented to you. Um, we have department heads that have been very creative in creating schedules to maintain critical services, and this would be for situations where we are unable to work on site or work remotely at home. Um, the intent is to keep employees whole, um, so I will go ahead and read the um, document that was provided. So in the event that a community order for individuals to stay at home is issued um, by the health officer, Board of Health, Sling County Departments are authorized and directed to reduce the number of staff members reporting to their normal places of work to only minimum staffing necessary to maintain critical functions. County employees are directed not to report to their normal places of work and will be compensated with pandemic pay for up to 25 regular work shifts in a calendar year without further action of the Board of County Commissioners. All employees will comply with the stay-at-home order when not reporting to work. In addition, employees that are on pandemic pay are expected to be ready and available to answer questions, provide assistance, or report to work if requested during normal business hours. Um, as I mentioned earlier, department heads, they are identifying critical functions, um, employees and schedules necessary to maintain the minimum staffing of those critical functions. Um, and again, they're looking for creative ways to do that um, with both on-site 
work at home, um, creative scheduling to um, create less contact with each other. And I am available for questions. Questions from commissioners? I, I will state, Marilyn, I know that you and the administrative staff and, and all of our staff, uh, all of our department heads and staff have worked uh, way beyond the hours they're supposed to be working on every week and 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 being very diligent and and taking care of the business that we need to take care of right now uh, looking after families is a, is a high priority looking after our employees is a very high priority so Marilyn uh, personally thank you very much uh, from me and I'm assuming the other commissioners would say the same so are there other well, comments? Thank you. Thank you, and I have to uh, commend Phil um, for his expertise and recommendations through all of this as well. I think he and I have worked, you know, very, very well on creating some verbiage for this um, directive, and um, and again, it is to the intent is to try to keep our employees whole during this crisis at this time. Um, a heartfelt thank you very much. Other commissioners have a comment. If not, I would take a, I guess there is no motion to be made here. Uh, yeah, it is. There is two. So uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chair, this is a Commissioner Shadwick, and I, uh, I apologize. I don't have the language in front of me. I'll let somebody else make the motion. All right. I, I've got it right in front of me. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson will make the motion. And that as uh, I move, we adopt the Saline County Stay-at-Home Directive in order to allow uh, pandemic pay for county employees. Is there a second? Commissioner Sparks and I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we adopt the Saline County Stay at Home Directive in order to allow pandemic pay for county employees. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. The motion passes 5-0. We'll move on to uh, non-action items. And uh, item number one on the non-action items is jail options discussion. Uh, extremely difficult time, terrible timing <laughs> to say the least on all of this. Uh, I, I think my feelings is that in, in an effort to keep the jail project on on the timeline that we have discussed and established, we need to be ready next week to openly discuss the jail project uh, and which, which directive that we want to go for as far as putting it on the ballot. I want everybody to keep in mind that the, the vote would still be six to seven months away. Uh, we could always get away from that, but we've got a lot of money invested in this project and we need to keep it on the timeline that we have established and hopefully uh, the pandemic uh, situation will be cleared up by that time that we need to make that final decision. But nonetheless, in an effort to keep our timeline on, on uh, schedule, we need, as a commission, we need to make up our minds next week as to which avenue that we're gonna, which option that we're gonna pursue. With that having been said, um, other comments or the commissioners wish to make? This is Commissioner Shadwick and I agree. Let's just keep it on the timeline. I'm not saying I'm supportive of either one of those options, but we, we've got to make a decision. Anyone else? This is Commissioner White and I have an administrator question. And Phil, Phil, if we pulled the plug today, how much money jeopardy in regards to our construction manager at risk and our architect fees we've already have invested? Uh, it would be about 110000 Okay. Uh, that's what I was roughly guessing, but uh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hearing no other uh, comments, uh We'll move to item number two, which is the uh, county administrator's update with uh, Philip Smith Haynes, county administrator. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, 
Uh, just a few things. First, I wanted to update the commission and the public on the current coronavirus situation. Of course, everyone should know by now that we are in a statewide stay-at-home order. County government is considered an essential function, but uh, we have been using the line around here that just because you can doesn't mean you should. So as you heard from Marilyn Lemer, we have a lot of uh, departments and functions that are have gone to minimum staffing. So we appreciate all the efforts of the staff and we appreciate the commission's approval of the pandemic pay. The second item with regards to the coronavirus is the potential budget impacts. I think the commission has taken some prudent actions this morning in terms of um, what I would call tapping the brakes, not slamming the brakes. The county is very fortunate because uh, we rely to a larger extent than many other jurisdictions on property tax, which tends to be less reactive to economic conditions than uh, other taxes. However, the uh, League of Municipalities is estimating that there may be a delinquency rate as high as 30% on our second half property tax payments this year, as well as a 25% decrease in sales tax receipts. If that were to come to pass, um, the combined impact to Saline County's budget would be a $2.2 million hit to our general fund revenues. I will say while that is a large impact, it is something that we are prepared to withstand. Um, we do have a budget stabilization account of $1.9 million. And last year, we ended the year with an additional $1.4 million in unspent funds in our general fund. So a $2.2 million hit would uh, be significant, but not crippling. And again, I would advise commissioners to tap the brakes on spending, not slam the brakes. Uh, that brings me to a review of our 2019 end-of-year transfers that our auditor has requested us to weigh in on. Uh, the commission in December approved a resolution allowing for unspent funds to be transferred to our capital projects. The auditor has prepared the maximum numbers that would be permissible. Um, that includes $2.8 million out of the general fund, $1.1 million out of Red Bridge, $45,000 in the Noxious Weed Fund, and $120,000 in the Health Department Fund. At this time, I am going to recommend that we transfer just $1.4 million in the general fund, $650,000 in Road and Bridge, and zero dollars for either weed or the health department. I am making that recommendation in light of what we just mentioned about the um, possible impacts of the coronavirus and decreased revenues. I think it's important to preserve unencumbered cash in each of our funds. Uh, I originally discussed with department heads making a transfer of about $2 million in the general fund and 800000 in Road and Bridge, but I have revised those recommendations downward at this time and based on those coronavirus impacts as well as some revised numbers from the auditors. So uh, I'd be happy to answer questions from the commissioners about that, but unless there are any objections, that is what I will uh direct the auditor to do at this time. Okay. That sounds well put together. Are there uh, comments from other commissioners? Commissioner Shadwick here. Uh, thank you for doing that. That seems very prudent and uh, appreciate your direction. Anyone else? Commissioner Reese, I concur with uh, Commissioner Shadwick's remarks. 
Commissioner White. I concur. Commissioner Sparks, I think it's a great, great way to go. Yeah, concur. Thank you, Philip. Uh, item number three on the non-action uh, items is commissioner comments. This is Commissioner Shadwick, and I just have a quick comment to my fellow commissioners. I know that with my uh, motions today, it might seem a little willy-nilly that I'm supporting some things and not supporting other things. But I guess my point on this is, you know, county government does need to go forward. The citizens are expecting the same level of services as, as, uh, as always, and our staff is doing a great job of doing that. However, um, I'll probably sharpen my pencil a little bit on anything that comes forward and, and make sure that it really is justified at this time. And so I, I apologize for seeing seeming all over the board, but I just wanted to let you know kind of my thoughts. And Commissioner Vidrickson. Uh, I'd like to comment. I, I really commend uh, uh, not only our county administrator, but his staff and, uh, and uh, all his department heads for this trying time. Uh, but I think I'd be remiss if I didn't also uh, thank our chairman who has been asked to uh, represent us uh, on the radio uh, at, at different meetings uh, in conjunction with the city. And, and uh, so with that said, uh, I want to thank the, the chairman for his work this past week. Commissioner Vidrickson, thank you, Jim. Uh, I mean, I look at it as we're all in it together, and it just so happens that that chairman title is attached to my name, and it and it comes with the territory. And uh, you know, I'm I'm just like everyone else. I'm just trying to dig in and do my part, and hopefully it'll it'll help. <laughs> so, uh, are there any other announcements? All right, now uh, that having been said, we will look for an executive session. And Mr. Commission, uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, this is uh, County Administrator Phil smith -Hain. I would request that the commission recess into an executive session under the personnel exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act to discuss a department head performance evaluation and that we would reconvene electronically at uh, 1046. Commissioner Shadwick here. Um, I move that we accept that motion. Commissioner Sparks, I second it. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we move into executive session under the personnel exception to uh, Kansas Open Meetings Act and reconvene in in this room in 10 minutes, uh, I believe is, about, is the right number. Uh, Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. Commissioner Vidrickson. Aye. Uh, I want the commissioners to be aware, I believe they have to hang up and call back in, Phil. Is that correct? And I, uh, everyone's been instructed to do that, I think. so. Uh, at this time, we will go into executive session. So moved. So moved. Second. <laughs> Been moved and seconded that we adjourn today's Thanks. meeting. All of those in favor say aye, and that would start with Commissioner White. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. And I will note that Commissioner Shadwick has exited from the meeting, and Commissioner Vidrickson also is I. Uh, we are adjourned.